In today's video, we're going to be talking about the list of tools that I've been promising for quite a while. I have had it not only on the channel, but on my Patreon side as well. People are requesting like, Phil, do you have a list of your favorite StuMac tools? Although I've done videos on Amazon tools, Harbor Freight tools, Music Nomad, I even did the dollar store tools that I liked. Today, I'm going to show you my 12 favorite StuMac tools. But more importantly, which has taken a while, I got StuMac to do something really special for you guys. There's a link down below and I'm gonna show you all the tools. You don't have to buy them specifically, you can buy whatever you want. But there's a program called Stu Max. And what happens is, it's a $50 a year agreement. In other words, you pay $50, and for one year, you get free shipping, 50 countries included. So it's not just the US, so check to make sure your country is included. You get 10% off like guitar kits, you get 10% off uh, woods, I think wood supplies. You get 15% off strings, you get 50% off learning materials, and you get no questions asked returns. So in other words, if you get any tools you don't like, you can send them back. But more importantly, you also get a lifetime warranty on your tools. So if for any reason any of these tools fail on you, you can contact Stu Mac and get them replaced. That's a great program, but what they're doing for you guys and you guys only from September 14th to September 28th, if you click that link, they're gonna give it to you for 50% off. So instead of $50 a year, you pay 25. But more importantly, everything you purchase, when you make that initial purchase, you'll get 10% off as well. So, I mean, it's never been done before. This is like getting a discount to Disneyland. It doesn't happen. So I just wanna let you know before we get started that we were able to negotiate that uh, on the channel for you guys. I, I would also like to point out that Stu Mac is not paying me for this video. They didn't give me any of these tools. In fact, every single tool I'm gonna show you including one that, because I have to explain why it's not the exact one I'm showing you on the list. I bought these. <laughs> so, uh, in no particular order. Now, these are my files. Oops. <laughs> these are the files I recommend. What you have is you have a front end dress file. Uh, this is my favorite file for doing front ends. You can use a triangle file. There's all kinds of files you can use. Um, some people use sanding blocks. I'm not a big fan of that. This file is the first file. When, when I started doing a lot of fret work, um, before I even knew about this, I would buy little files like this and I would round them off and buff them. And I think a lot of people were doing this. That's why Stu Max started making them. <laughs> this file ups your game. You do this, if you take care of your fret sprout, if you round off your fret ends, if you do the, use this file, it's amazing. I did a video uh, where I did a sharp max in Germany with a master luthier in Germany and he was using one of these. What I like about these three files that I'm gonna show you is this one is a six inch uh, level file, leveling file. Now, this one obviously looks really old because it is old. It's over 20 years old. I have a newer one that I bought, but I'm still using the original one. A lot of people ask about the sanding beam. You know, do you just use a sanding beam? You can. The sanding beam works with some sandpaper if you want to do that. Why that's different is a sanding beam is really good if you're just refretted a guitar or you're doing a guitar from scratch. This is really good because it will do all the whole, the whole fretboard if you want to level all the frets. But more importantly, I like it because I can do just areas. And it's just really a good basic tool. It doesn't take up a ton of room. It's very effective. And if you're not doing tons and tons of uh, crown levels, this is the way to go. You get with one of these and then you get a double edged fret file. And there's two different kinds, but take notice of the, of the size you want. There's a jumbo fret wire and then there's like a medium and tiny fret wire one. I use the medium uh, tiny fret wire one. This is the one I have right here. Unless you have those jumbo wide uh, frets that you see on Ibanez and stuff, you may want that specific other one or if you have the money to get both. I have both because I sometimes will need them, but if you're just gonna get one, this is the one I like. So essentially I can level frets, which I've done in tons of videos and showed you that. Then you can crown them over like this. And then of course I can use this to the fret ends. These three files, I can literally crown and level anyone's guitar uh, anywhere. That's all I need, a flat surface, something safe uh, to put the guitar on like a mat. I've literally done this um, uh, a thousand times. I've done an entire crown and level, which is these three tools. That's all you need. Now, you're gonna to need to polish them. And my favorite thing to use is the micro mesh sheets. In fact, you can see mine are always, I'm always ready for new ones. <laughs> these are rather expensive, but these sheets and this block are next level stuff. The frets, the way that they, they will come out, you'll think you have stainless steel frets. Um, they'll look fantastic. A lot of you guys will mention in a lot of comments, they'll say, what about the Dremel tools? I absolutely use the Dremel tools, but that's not something I recommend out the gate. And that's something we're gonna do because this is for two weeks. So I'm gonna do other videos of other tools I like uh, from StuMac and other places as well. In fact, like today, we're gonna to be talking about some stuff that's not StuMac stuff as well. So this sheets with these three files, I can make this, in fact, I can tell you for a fact, this guitar was done with these exact tools. It is flawless. This 
looks like an emery board. I, every time I bring this up, somebody says, oh, I can get those at Walgreens. The ones you get on Walgreens, if you want to use them on your guitar, that's on you. Um, my guitars are very nice and my customers' guitars are very valuable to me to make sure that they're right. So I, I choose these certain things, especially when they're only a couple bucks. You have three sides. Let's say I was to fill these fret ends and they're not rough, but maybe they're not as polished as I want. I could use just this 12,000 right here and I don't have to worry about doing anything. I just rub right across. Now it's a lot better if instead of doing the whole fretboard, you do spots. One of the things I like about this is, is that it won't damage finish. Uh, there's a light finish on this neck and it won't damage it. It's really nice. So that's another thing I highly recommend. And of course, before you even do crown and levels, <laughs> you're going to need to know if your, if your guitar needs a crown level. And of course there's a fret rocker tool. I've received a ton of over the, uh, over the years and I like a lot of them for a lot of reasons, but I mean, this one is just bulletproof and it's been, it's been around. It's like, I couldn't even tell you how old it is. <laughs> it's been around for a long time. Now looking at the frets, I took the rocker out and I found a couple high frets. You can hear this one clicking. And another thing uh, that I use that isn't a Stumac tool is one thing is somebody's, when I mention the fret rocker, a lot of you are gonna go, what about a string action guy gauge? Um, I do have the Stumac ones. I bought those. I like them, but I love the Music Nomad one. This one is my favorite because it's black and the lettering is white. And I wanted to do this also because I'm sure the Stumac guys might see this video. And if they do, I really think you should consider redoing yours, not only to black like this, but black and then use Lumen Lay and make it glow in the dark and it would probably be, it would be the best string action guide in history, but it's a really good quality one. I will put a link to this one uh, where I get these at Sweetwater, but like I said, um, if you want to keep it uniform and do the Stumac, I have the Stumac one and I highly recommend that one. I used that one for years and years and years. Quality wise, it's probably better than this, a little thicker than this. So this isn't a Stumac product, but they sell it and it's a Daddario product. This is a string winder and cutter, and this is my favorite one that cuts the strings. It even has a a bridge pen puller right here, which is one of my favorite ones if you have to use a bridge pen puller. Um, I love this because again, it uses compression to cut the string and it doesn't uh, use like a you know wire cutter. So it's not about getting dull, it will never get dull. It's a dull now, it's still the day you buy it. It's compact, it's easy. Um, it will do a bass, it will do vintage tuning keys, it'll do modern tuning keys. It's small, it's perfect, it's the one I use in every video. So I highly recommend it. Now this is the notch straight edge. And what I love about it is it has both and you, and as soon as I pull this out, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, it's in so many of the geeky stuff videos, right? Every time we're checking the neck, this is what we're using. This has 24 and three quarters and 25 and a half inch scale. Great way to check to see if your neck is straight. And especially when you're doing a setup and everything I'm showing you is basically everything you would need to do the ultimate setup. Um, and of course I've done these tons of videos with this. And then the radius gauges that are notched. Now, there are two versions uh, that I like. They're the under saddle ones that are really good and I use those a lot in the videos, but if you watch, these are what's come up all the time. And it's, again, it's just efficiency, it's fast. I can use these because they're notched out so I can put them right on the strings. I labeled mine, if you notice in the videos, mine was, one will say front and then all of a sudden one says back. And that's what I mean by front is, uh, fr <laughs> front is essentially the top of the neck and back is towards the back. I don't know why I did it that way, but I do front and back. So, so that way I can choose to do this both sides of the neck. For instance, this guitar is a, it's got a, a 12 inch to 16 inch radius uh, fretboard. So I can check that with these and see if it's 12 at top and uh, 16 at back. Another tool that isn't sold at Stumac, um, but I want to share with you because it's one of my favorite tools and I thought this is an opportunity to share it. This is at Harbor Freight. This is $3. It's a suction cup. So what you do is you stick it on the back of the guitar like this. Okay. Push down on it, squeeze, and then lift up. And so right now the back plate is screwed in, but you can imagine from me doing this, if it wasn't screwed in, we'd pull it right out. And when you want to let go, you let let go. For $3, it's a great way to remove the back plates off a of guitar. And uh, it's a fantastic device for three bucks. I will put a link to Harbor Freight. So I have the Stumac calipers right here. The ones that I put in the link, the ones that they put as Phil's favorite, they are a lot less money than these. Um, and um, I have used those and I like them a lot. I do not own that set. I have used it many times though. I've tested it. All my friends bought that set because it was less money and all of them did the same thing to me. After they got it, they said, can I come over and you check it and make sure it's a good thing? And we compared it to mine and it was absolutely the same. The only reason I have this one is because uh, when I bought this one, Stu Mac only made one. <laughs> this is the one they made, so I bought it. And of course, you've seen in the videos, you check the thickness, you can check the width. This is really good for checking everything. When you're working on guitars, 
Uh, it's no different than anything in life that you work, when you work on stuff, you measure twice and you cut once. These are, I think, fantastic. And the light ones, again, like I said, I can recommend them. And this is the only caveat. This is the only tool where I said, hey, everything I'm recommending is what I use. That one is not what I use. This is what I use. If you want to buy the more expensive one of these, get the more expensive ones. Um, but I can tell you as uh, I've tried them both, um, you know, if you're using them a lot, if you're abusing them a lot, um, maybe get the nicer ones. This is the ESP Spanner Wrench. ESP like the guitar company. This is a great tool. Um, you see me use this in tons of videos. You can get underneath uh, knobs and pry a knob up. You can use it to tighten output jacks. We can tighten up tuning keys. And fantastic tool. I find this tool is so useful for so many things. I, I'm constantly using it for all kinds of stuff. This one I wanted to keep to last. And the reason is, is it's very expensive for what it is. So definitely if you get it, get it on the discount. <laughs> I absolutely love this thing so much. I own three of these. I keep one in my truck, I keep one in my shop, and I keep one up here in the office. What this is, is it's a little screwdriver kit. And your first thought is like, well, I've seen those everywhere, but it's every single thing that you would deal with if you deal with guitars. It's everything you need. It's every little Allen wrench that you're gonna need. It's every little flathead and Phillips head that fits specifically. Everything has been well, definitely picked out. Um, when I first got one of these, I wasn't sure. <laughs> Especially when you get it and it's really expensive and you open it up and you're like, okay, can I just go get this down at the Harbor Freight? And there's so many toolkits. And what actually happened with me is I bought another toolkit that was more robust and it had more stuff. In fact, it had four times as much stuff as this. And it was really good and it's really overbuilt. And I was really impressed. And I got it and I go, yeah, I think I'm going to send back the Stumac one. And then what happened was, Every time I turn around, I was just, the, the, the robust one had stuff that didn't, didn't fit. And slowly over time, it didn't take me very long, maybe a week or two to figure out that everything here was really thought out to where it's just what you need. And that's why I said this. And notice I picked this instead of an Allen wrenches. Um, I think if you have this, and like I said, everything I just showed you, you have everything you need to do setups, crown levels. I mean, this is all basic stuff. Things I didn't mention, and I'm not mentioning is, like a mat. Of course, Stu Max sells a mat, but of course, if you watch my videos, you can get at the dollar store. You can get a bath mat and use a bath mat. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it's up to you. Um, a neck cradle, same thing. You can get uh, the Stu Mac neck cradle. There's a ton of neck cradles out in the market. Um, or you can just take a couple towels and, <laughs> and roll them up. Some of you guys are at different levels. So I know this stuff's expensive, but I'm telling you, if you invest in some of this stuff, it will pay a dividend. It's a great way to start doing stuff, especially if you have a basic guitar you just want to start messing with. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, it was just a little impromptu. I thought it'd be fun. I wanted to share this with you. We'll be talking about it on the podcast. We'll be talking for the next two weeks. Also, put in suggestions in the comments down below. Videos you would like to see when it comes in the area of these tools, other tools. If there's a tool that you look at at Stu Mac and you go, you know, I would love to see a video about that, put that down below. Thank you guys so much, as always. Thank you for your time. Till the next time, love your gear.